Igor Mitin noticed oddities in the behavior of his father about a month ago. At first, they were insignificant and did not cause the guy any concerns. This was expressed in the fact that Piotr Mitin began to linger for a long time in the basement, which seemed to him almost a second home. After visiting this place, Igor's father began to behave strangely, and in his detached gaze, something otherworldly and creepy appeared, which had not been there before. The further it all went, the scarier Igor became. Furtively watching his father, Igor tried to figure out exactly where it all started and what day could be considered the beginning of all that horror, which for some time had been inextricably linked with his father. Peter Mitin was frankly disliked in the village of Ozerki. To some extent, this was due to the fact that Igor's father was a greedy and quarrelsome man. And this despite the fact that Peter held the position of a village paramedic, to get an appointment to which residents of all neighboring districts dreamed of. Peter recently turned 40, five years old, and his son was 18. Igor Mitin did not want to follow in his father's footsteps and connect his life with medicine. The boy's own mother died 15 years ago, as a result of which all his childhood memories were connected only with his father. Igor perfectly remembered the times when they lived half starved, due to the fact that his father saved every ruble and saved on everything that was possible. With a young stepmother, Igor's relationship did not go well right away. There were frequent skirmishes between the father and his cohabitant, but as a rule, they all ended in peace. This was explained by the fact that Peter did not want his screams to be heard by the neighbors, who were just waiting for the right moment to find out all the secrets. Come on, what secrets can you have, Dad? Igor once said. Pyotr Leonidovic suddenly changed his face and turned pale. It's none of your business, puppy. You'd better figure yourself out. Father snapped angrily. At that moment, Igor sincerely regretted that he had touched on such a painful topic. The guy knew that Barty really had secrets otherwise, why does he constantly go down to the basement and spend several hours in it? And also, my father changed the old lock to a new one, and now he wore the key to the basement around his neck, what is he hiding there? There's nothing in it but empty cans and old junk. Thought Igor. At such moments, the guy wanted to climb into the basement and see with his own eyes what was taking up more and more of his father's time. But not only strange absences caused Igor strange suspicions. The guy's fears were confirmed by flashes of inexplicable aggression shown by his father. Sometimes, Peter behaved as if an evil spirit possessed him, demanding from him only blind worship of the forces of evil. One morning, Igor woke up earlier than usual from the fact that he was woken up by a very strange sound. Remotely, it resembled the growling of a hungry dog that had dug up an old beef mosul and was sucking out the rotten, bone marrow with appetite. But Igor didn't have a dog, which means, there was simply no one to make such a sound. The guy carefully crept into the kitchen and from what he saw there, he could not restrain a convulsive cry the sight was so shocking that Igor instinctively took two steps back. The father, like a wild animal, was on his knees and, with rage, gnawed the leg of a chair moreover. He did it with such frenzy that the tree split and sharp fragments of wood penetrated his gums, tearing their fleshy tissue almost to the very base of the jaw. Blood, interspersed with fragments of tooth enamel, poured out of his mouth in a terrible, crimson stream, the very sight of which made Igor want to vomit. Looking more closely, the guy saw that blood was coming not only from his father's mouth, but also from his eyes, ears and even nose Piotr Mitin's face was almost invisible because of the pouring blood which completely covered the kitchen floor. Crawling on all fours like a wild animal, Igor's father kept falling on his side, slipping on puddles of his own blood. For a terrified guy, it seemed like a real nightmare. The father really looked like a real beast which even the most secret fantasy of an inveterate sadist or a bloodthirsty maniac could not imagine. The very movements of the man betrayed him as a predator, who in impotent anger gnawed a wooden stump, not noticing the abundant blood pouring from the natural openings of his body. Dad what are you doing? What's wrong with you? Coming to his senses, Igor exclaimed and came closer. At that moment, he realized that something strange was happening to his father and yet, there is definitely no explanation for this in medical textbooks or medical reference books. At that moment, Piotr Mitin raised his head and looked at his son with eyes in which the darkness itself froze Igor shuddered and, with difficulty, suppressed a new attack of fear. He knew perfectly well that his father's eyes were blue, but not black moreover. At that moment Peter's face resembled a roughly mold mask made of clay, which was doused with fresh blood for greater effect. 
The father mumbled something inarticulate and kept glancing towards the basement, the entrance to which was equipped in the house. The door to the basement was ajar, and the massive lock was lying on the floor catching his son's gaze. Piotr Mitin rushed to the basement like a dog who saw a cat after the contact of his bloody hands with the floor. Clear bloody traces immediately appeared on the linoleum, which were very similar to those that Mowgli would certainly have left if he switched to human flesh as a cannibal from the jungle. Dad. Dad. Well, where are you going? Igriev shouted and tried to pull his father away from the door. But Peter still didn't say a word and tried to slide down the basement steps. Fortunately, the stepmother immediately ran to the noise who helped the stepson to hold his father and bring him to his senses at least a little with the help of a tub of cold water. When the blood was washed off Peter's face, he became for a while a man who did not understand what had happened to him. Trembling all over, the man pressed his back against the wall and squeezed his eyes shut from the shame and despair that gripped him. That's it it made me like this, Piotr said in a voice trembling with excitement and again darted a glance in the direction of the basement. At that moment, Igor realized that everything that was happening to his father was somehow connected with this cursed place. Taking advantage of the hitch caused by the fact that the stepmother tried to help the roommate, he rushed to the door of the hated basement. Igor flew down the stairs in the blink of an eye and almost collapsed on a mountain of dust, covered glass jars of pickles and jam. The guy understood that it was clearly not this pile of glass that was the object of his father's worship, but then what? The guy turned his head to the right and saw a leather bag on the table, which he had never seen before upstairs. The father was growling and raging, whom the stepmother was trying to hold with her last strength. Igor felt in his heart that this bag was somehow connected with the madness of his father, who was slowly losing his human appearance. Jerkily opening his carry, on luggage, the guy gasped in amazement. The bag turned out to be filled to the brim with jewelry and bundles of money, which were prudently tied with an elastic band, what is it? Where did my father get such capital? Why, there's a fortune here, comma, flashed through Igor's head. But the guy did not have time to finish his thought, because Peter burst into the basement, who pushed him aside and pressed the bag to his chest. Where did you get this, Igor asked, trying to remain calm. But father, of course, was not going to answer. Shielding the bag with the money, he huddled in a corner like a rabid wolf trapped by hunters. Igor looked at his stepmother standing a little further away and shook his head. The guy understood that his father's carving was completely torn off and, if nothing was done, tomorrow he would forget how to speak, and the day after tomorrow he would switch to raw meat moreover, it is not a fact that it will not turn out to be human. That day, my father never came out of the basement and sat in it until nightfall. From time to time, Igor would come to the door and listen to how somewhere in the depths of this dark room. His father was muttering something inarticulate to himself, like a wild forest hermit. But most of all, the guy was worried not even about that, but about where his father got such money from. It is noteworthy that the oddities of Peter Leonidovic coincided with the appearance of such a huge sum in the basement. But no matter how much Igor puzzled over this riddle, he could not find the answer to his question. When in the morning, the stepmother entered the basement. She suddenly screamed at the top of her voice and rushed out of the house jumping out of bed, Igor rushed to help in his underwear. What he saw shocked the guy so much that it cost him a lot of effort not to go after his stepmother to say that my father looked terrible, was to say nothing. He was still able to move only on all fours, and his arched back began to resemble the half of a flattened bagel, but worst of all, in the semi-darkness of the basement, his father's skin looked, which for some reason was covered with a stiff, prickly coat that looked like blue, black steel wire. Pyotr Leonidovica's face also underwent changes, turning into an eerie likeness of a death mask stripped from the stiffened corpse of a wild animal his ears were pointed and covered with thick fur, and his upper lip shrank in size, revealing strong, white teeth. The lower one, on the contrary, hung down, as a result of which a viscous, fetid saliva constantly oozed out of his father's mouth onto the floor my god, his turning into some kind of gowl. But how? Why, Igor thought, trembling with fear. At this time, the father turned his hypertrophied muzzle towards him and, gritting his teeth, looked into his son's eyes it was obvious that Peter was trying to say something, but the words were given to him with great difficulty. He cursed me, Peter croaked, almost choking on his own saliva. Who? Who cursed you? Igor exclaimed, trying not to look at his father. The half-monster, half-man began to roar with croaking, crow, like laughter, after which he began his story. 
which was interrupted from time to time by bouts of uterine hiccups and coughing, more like a dog barking, a month ago, late in the evening, three men barged into my paramedic station. I was about to close up when these two dragged their bloody comrade this guy was injured according to his accomplices. He got shot during a raid on a jewelry store, complicated by a shootout and a chase. They had a valise full of valuables with them when I saw him, my eyes immediately lit up. The creature who was Peter croaked Igor had heard such a confession for the first time, and therefore he was looking forward to the continuation of the story. It was obvious that the vile creature was in a hurry to tell his son the whole truth before he finally forgot how to speak. The sight of these riches turned my head of course, I understood that there were three of them, and I was one, but greed was stronger than reason. A clear plan of action immediately formed in my head it was like an obsession I sent the wounded raider to his forefathers with a shock dose, of an anaesthetic that caused him paralysis of the respiratory organs with the two remaining ones, I had to tinker. One of them, I managed to cut down with an axe standing in the hallway of the paramedic station. But with the second, I already clashed in hand, to, hand bash on bash. I was lucky, he turned out to be smaller than me and I was able to contrive and pierce his throat with a scalpel but before he died, this poor fellow cursed me, wishing to die the death of a dirty dog, Peter croaked from everything he heard, Igor's hair stood on end. His father was a murderer who killed three people in cold blood. What did you do with the bodies, Igor asked, still not believing himself. The nightmarish monster, who was once his father, gathered the remnants of humanity into a fist and croaked. I buried the bodies in a vacant lot behind the paramedic station I specially separated the heads from the bodies, and drowned them in the swamp hands, buried at the edge of the forest to make identification difficult having taken the loot of the raiders, I wanted to live a rich life but instead, he slowly began to turn into a beast it's all a curse this bandit said it with such malice that I simply have no chance of healing the revelations of his father shocked Igor to the depths of his soul before his eyes, dad was turning into a monster who was rapidly losing the remnants of everything human but at the same time, this creature was still Igor's father, and the guy couldn't leave him like that in any way go away before I become what I'm destined to become. Remember, you are not my son I married your mother when you were a year old I am infertile so, I decided to play father so that no one would point a finger at me, as if reading Igor's thoughts. The monster croaked looking into the eyes of the devil's spawn, the guy realized that he was not joking. In the blink of an eye, Igor ran up the steps, jumped over the threshold, and noisily closed the door, after which, for reliability, he threw a massive lock on the hinges. At the same moment, a heart-rending roar rang out in the basement, which informed the guy that his foster father had become a real fiend of hell Igor did not open the door. Patiently listening to the roar of the creature cursed by the dying bandit he felt that his father had told the truth and no one could save the man who had turned into a monster as it turned out later, everything told by Peter Mitten turned out to be true. The bodies of three dead raiders were indeed found in a vacant lot behind the paramedic station. The heads could not be found, but the severed hands were still able to help in this difficult matter according to them, the bodies were identified and sent to the district morgue. When the district police officer called by Igor opened the basement door, he found only a huge dead dog in it whose belly was stuffed with devoured money and jewellery from the same leather bag Igor did not know why his father, who turned into a dog, did this, but he understood that the death curse turned out to be stronger than money, which in fact were ordinary pieces of paper, for which it was certainly not worth shedding blood.